G'day to you. So this video is actually being recorded live on Facebook. And if you're watching this part, that means you're watching the replay. So I want you to hit the number two so that we know um, who we're going to be working with and who else is in our audience. And if you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment so that we all know what is actually going on. Because my mission is to help entrepreneurs like yourself to actually set up reliable and lucrative businesses. Now, it looks like the live section of the show has just begun. So I'm going to be, um, you know, segueing through and talking to the people that are live online right now. Good day to you, Gail, and good day, Langton. Good day, Stephen Kelly. Uh, good day, Lisa. I am so sorry we didn't get to catch up, Lisa, but um, I will be explaining to you what's going on. Welcome to 2018, guys. So excited. Steve Thompson, my man, how are you doing? Kirsty, this is the first Lunch and Learn for 2018, and I really wanted to make sure that everybody is all well rested and everybody had a good holiday. Now, obviously, if you're watching this live, I want you to type in the number one so that we all know that this is all uh, being received. You never know what would have broken or what could have gone bad over the holidays. I'm really hoping everybody enjoyed their holiday. Now, guys, just to reiterate and let you know what's going on, Brooke. Thank you so much, man. You were the first call um, that I made in 2017 and you actually set up the tone of what 2017 is going to be like for me. So thank you so much, brother. Now, obviously, as you understand, guys, while you're typing in the number one, if you're watching this live, you do know that I viscerally believe that every online business should be profitable and enjoyable. Right, and I viscerally believe that if you're an online business person, you should be able to create for and relate to those you're gonna be, um, you know, demanding money off of. I see Mozanier has just joined in. Jordan Luck, ha, happy new year, my friend. I hope you guys had a fantastic break. Um, you know, and, um, you know, you, you are on track to be doing things that are meaningful, uh, for your businesses and your families in 2018. Glenn Cartwright, thank you so much, man. And I really, really enjoy the support. Loretta, how are you? Hope you had a fantastic break and that, um, you know, you are well rested and ready to start and kick on 2018. Some people are still on holidays which is cool. Some people have already started work. Okay, good on you. But I really want you to realize and so that we can start off from where we left off from with a bigger bang in 2018 because some of Oh, some of you guys are going into year number two of your business. Some of you guys are going into year number three, et cetera, et cetera. So it's one of those things that is really exciting for me, for those people we started off with and those people that are going to be starting right now a fresh welcome aboard, all right? So basically, this is what happens every single day at 2 p.m. AEST without a shadow of doubt and fail. Unless something really important and cool is happening outside the office, we sit around here and we talk about how you can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So basically, I teach you a four-step strategy that will help you capture the right kind of leads, send the right kind of content to them, convert them into paying customers, and then create them so that you can brand your business with ease and so you can make a lot of uh, profit. So all of that is done through uh, digital marketing strategies and uh, I really want to inspire you to do things that actually inspire you and I want you to know that all that you can do is all that you can do. So with the help of people like myself and the other people that are watching that already know how to live, learn and contribute, I want to officially wish you a wealthy year in 2018. Now before we get all excited about everything else that's going to be happening i want to make sure i want to find out did you set goals for 2018 if you set goals for 2018 i want you to type in the number two if you did write down your goals and set them up for 2018 about what you're going to do who you're going to be and how you're going to present yourself i want you to type in the number two right now because some people jump into a new year without a plan some people jump into a new year um you know without any sort of resolution or any way of a trajectory of how they're going to go by all right you are in control of your future, your own destiny. What you think about, what you write down comes about. 
All right, you are who you thought you should be. Right now, whatever is happening in your life, you've attracted it to yourself. You sitting and watching this show right now is something that you attracted to yourself. I just didn't show up in your newsfeed. That doesn't just happen because there's 2 million people, um, I mean 2 billion people that are showing up on Facebook right now. Why you, why me, why right now? So when you record your dreams, when you put your goals on paper, you set the motion in process, you know what I mean? To be Become the person you want to be, to attract the business you want to attract and the people you actually want to work with. So that's why I put the topic of this video and say, put the future of your business, of your family into good hands, which are your own. All right. So let me know if you actually wrote down your goals for 2018 and if you put them and you actually put them down to paper. Because at the end of the day, some people do, some people don't. Some people get so drunk on New Year's Eve and they're like, New Year, New Me. But then come to um, you know January 8th, they've already forgotten what they promised themselves to be, do and have. All right. I want you to, I, I know that you've got big dreams. I know that, you know, you're dreaming really, really big. And I actually know that some of those big dreams are going to scare small minds. But don't be afraid. Around here, we're dreaming bigger dreams and we're going to achieve them. All right. So if, if you really want to know what's been happening in my life, I mean, in the time that I haven't been showing up, obviously, January is a bit of a... It's a bit of a funny month for me. Not funny as in haha, but it it's it's very emotional month. It's the beginning of, of the year for me. Um the first of January, the year two thousand, that's when my mom died. So every first of the year is like, whoa, okay, it reminds me of um what actually happened. And this year around it's eighteen years since um, you know, we we, we buried her, so God rest her soul. And um pretty much three, four days after that, it happens to be my anniversary with my wife so literally on the 4th of January that's when me and my wife got married and then on the 6th of January that's when our little girl was born so you know January is a bit of a heavy month but it also comes with surprises it also comes with me setting my business my life my financials and my health on a on a on a long term trajectory so this is why I'm here today so that we can you know highlight and so that we can share what's going to be happening in 2018 what you need to expect and how you're going to show up in 2018 um you know like like a champion because I'm not going to be leading with people that are heading nowhere because you know what you are an average of five people that you hang around with so why are you the fifth person that ain't going anywhere who is in my circle don't be a jerk don't be that person now Stephen Kelly says 2017 was the greatest year ever 2018 will be and it's time to 10x everything and guess what Stephen thank you so much it was really really good meeting you in 2017 and the year beyond Check the book that I'm reading. Thank you so much for the present, all right? So, so here it is. You might be sitting there and thinking, okay, I've got these big dreams. How am I going to tackle them? Because sometimes we, we tend to be the only person that stops us from achieving these dreams. You know why? Because these dreams are too big and we even can't believe them. They're hairy, they're audacious. Of course, there's that, you know, airy, you know, what do they call them? Those coaches that are always telling you to dream bigger, you know, 10x everything or do whatever it is. No disrespect, whoever is listening right now. But we all at some point in our life, we've had something grand that we've really wanted to accomplish. You know, however, I find that most of the times, you know, our dreams are just so big, we even don't believe them. And we, 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 we stop ourselves from accomplishing them. How are you going to help other people or how are you going to let other people know what it is that you dream about if you don't actually believe you are capable of achieving those dreams? You know, at the beginning of the year, the gyms are full, the businesses are full. But come May, June, July, everybody else is backtracked from their dreams. I don't want this year to be the year that you backtrack from whatever it is that you say you're going to be, do and have. Do you know what I mean? So I want you to effectively not, sh um, you know, start setting yearly goals. I want you to effectively start writing your obituaries. If you're not at that level, then you, whatever you said you're going to accomplish in 2018, you might accomplish it, but I want you to write it to me and let me know that, yes, I accomplished it and what you said was a lie. 
you need to effectively start setting really, really long-term goals. You know why? That gives you a bigger picture so that whenever the smallest of obstacles comes your way, you will know that you are headed towards something bigger. What do you want people to say about you when you die? What do you want kids to say about you when they want to say, I want to be, I want to grow old to be like Stephen? Because if you're not influencing people, if you're not influencing yourself, then you're boldly heading nowhere. All right. If you just set yearly goals, guess what? If it rains or if if they stand there and you can't wake up, what's going to happen? You are going to fall short. And that's going to keep becoming a vicious cycle. Every single year, you're going to continuously want to be something and then it's not going to work out. You need to set out. What do you want people to say at your funeral? And then reverse engineer that back. Because if you don't set long-term goals, every single year is going to be totally different and you're going to be confused and you're going to confuse the people around you. And guess what? You won't head anywhere. And Stephen says, exactly, well said. No use having goals in which you don't believe them and you're not going to take massive action. You need to have goals so big, they're going to scare, first of all, your mind and the small minds around you. But you know how, you know something, to effectively set long-term goals, you know, with that big picture in mind, it will change the outlook of how you work, how you operate, who you talk to, and how you introduce yourself to those people. Do you know what I mean? That's the reason why every single year people are always launching new products. It's not because they've just come up with the idea and, and, and it's happening. You know what I mean? You need to shift your mind to start believing that it is actually quite possible what you want to accomplish and you will accomplish everything. But if you dabble, if you just hope that things are going to will and fall into your plate or you probably going to have, you know, a win of a, in a lottery, well... I don't think you need to be watching this video. All right. I don't think you need to be watching this video. And this year I am going to be taking people off of my, my, my following because I really want to lead with people that are heading somewhere. So if you find yourself not really, you know, doing the same thing as you were doing last year or not having moved on, I'm going to politely ask you to leave. I will politely ask you to leave. All right, so let's go on to what I mean when I'm saying put the future or your future into good hands, which are your hands. You need to be the architecture or the architect of your own success. And what I mean is to methodically set your long term goals and then reverse engineer them. All right. To that big dream that you want to grow into and make it believable and make it easier for you to accomplish. Have you ever noticed whenever you want to go anywhere or if you're going to a friend's house, you put the last destination in the GPS and then the GPS navigates to where you are and reverse engineers to it. You know, when you want to go to Sydney, you type in the end destination. That's what you want to do with your goals. You want to have the end in sight and then reverse engineer how you're going to get there. Now, how are you going to do it? You break down your goals into really small and bite-sized steps so that it's not overwhelming you and so that it's not too much for the people that are around you. And so, you know, because the people that are going to be around you, if they don't believe or see any sort of movement, they're going to they're gonna backtrack with you and then they're going to tell you whatever you want to achieve is not going to work for you. But keep that in mind, you know, because what... You know, sometimes if your dreams are just way too big, even you would look at them and be like, nah, I'll come back tomorrow. But then that adds up. That day turns into weeks, weeks turn into months, and months turn into years. And there was yet another year we just stepped into. So don't make 2018 yet another year that you're going to start with nothing, end with nothing, and go away with nothing. All right? So if you don't break down your goals into small snackable goals, you know, get clear on where you want to be, who you want to become and who you want to be known for. And then the passion builds in and then your why starts making shape. Because if you don't have the passion, the why, then you're not going to act on any of the goals. 
And then when you don't act, what happens? It's just something that you wrote on paper and 2018 is yet another waste of a year. You don't want to be that person. So you want to break down your goal into small chunks. First of all, envision that big goal, you know, and, and you know, like what I find many entrepreneurs before you, they, they have this giant audacious ladder, which, which needs to be constructed piece by piece by piece. And some people are looking at where other people are already not looking at where they are. And that makes it very overwhelming. I have a team behind me, so don't look at this as if, you know, you also should be producing content at this scale. Don't look at this as if this is what you're supposed to be doing. Do you. Do what makes sense to you. And when you do achieve that part of of understanding and that clarity, it makes it easier for you to follow through with your goals. You know, it's very effective when you actually understand who you are, then you would be accomplishing your goals. Do you know what I mean? It really helps you to overcome the biggest hurdle because the biggest hurdle to getting through to your goals is yourself. What you tell yourself, who you surround yourself with and what you feed yourself and how you interpret the fears. You are mostly afraid because things sound bigger or larger than life. Break it down. What do you want? Is it a $1 million business? Is it a six-figure um, you know, business? Is it a $100 million business? Break it down into stages that you would understand where it's all going to. Like, I will give you an overall of what my, my big, hairy, audacious goal is like. I'm working hard to go towards a $100 million business. And it's going to be done in four stages. The first stage was the first couple of years that you guys saw. The consulting and, you know, all the other products that I was putting in. That's the first stage and it's almost, you know, going into the second stage, which is creating a software as a service that would then definitely widespread my influence, impact and reach. And guess what? The beginning of the year came in with the software as a service. We've already started the Australian business online directory. All right, that's the software that we're going to be putting in, helping as many businesses to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And then pretty much after that, we're going to be investing in the businesses that we've been helping. So, so you know, they say that in every, um, you know, a, a, a lot of businesses fail at the five-year mark. We're going to be looking at those businesses that we've been helping and figuring out which ones can we resuscitate and invest back into because you know why they already have our values. They already have our systems in place. So it's going to be an easy, you know, investment strategy to just, you know, lift them up using our resources and our equipment. That's stage number three. Stage number four is philanthropy. I come from Africa, all right? So basically, we're going to be helping, um, you know, all those other entrepreneurs that want to be, do, and have so that they can also help their communities, etc., etc. So that's how I'm going towards it. If I just woke up and said, I want a $100 million business, I would even look at myself and be like, with what capacity, with what technology, with what resources? So break it down into smaller bite-sized chunks. And make sure you're accountable every step of the way. I'm telling you guys everything that I'm doing. I'm showing up every single day so that I'm also accountable to myself to make this come to fruition. Find your own sort of accountability strategy that you're going to follow through so that even if you don't show up, that thing is going to wake you up and say, hey, brother, hey, sister, you must be doing something. So if your goal is to build and open a school or grow a multi-billion dollar company to, or create a global initiative of some kind, it can, be, it can be difficult to figure out where to start. Especially given the fact that, you know, undoubtedly nobody knows who you are. You don't yet have a voice. And you also have that voice in your head saying, you would never do this. <laughs> are you kidding me? Who, who, are you trying to, who are you trying to kid? You are not, you, you are nobody. That voice. You need to calm that voice down so that it doesn't work against you. It works for you. And how do you do that? You break down the goal so that it's easy. You, you, you say, hey, listen, we're just going around the corner. And then your brain is like, okay, okay, we'll go there. But little does it know that you're actually building. You know, you don't set out to build a building. You set out to put a brick after brick after brick after brick. Break down that goal and make it very meaningful and specific to exactly who you are and what you actually want to achieve. And then work towards that.
Some people fail because they just want this audacious goal. It makes it look good. It makes them look good. But then when they really go in to start working at it, they're like, nah, not today. You know, I set up to say I'm going to start working on the 8th of January. I've already, surprisingly, I've already had six calls. One of them has been the most powerful call ever with Brock. And, you know, it's all those small things leading towards where you really want to be. So figure out what are you telling yourself? What are you actually doing? And how are you separating doing and thinking? Because these are the kind of things that we tell ourselves when we attempt to dream big. You know, the problem is not the goal is so big. The problem is it's hard for us to imagine who are we going to become when that goal comes in place. And before you know it, you start crippling your own, you know, movement. You start, you know, nipping yourself in the bud. Because guess what? Your mind immediately retracts and become, it, it, it begins to discourage you so that it protects you from what it, 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 it believes is going to be in an, an, in, 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 what do you call it? Inevitable pain. No brain is going to allow you to do things that it thinks is going to hurt you. So it will continuously tell you to stay away from those things. But if you don't consciously inform your brain that where we're going is good, then your brain will always do the flight and fight response so that you don't go towards your dreams. Now, Kirsty says, what happens when it's cash flow that stops us moving forward? Now, let me tell you something, uh, Kirsty, and I'm going to be really, really blunt. A lot of things can be done for free. So if you say cash flow is your problem, and I understand cash flow is something that we can't really, 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 you know, go past if you don't have it. Because you're going to need money to buy resources. You're going to need money to, um, you know, buy equipment or pay people, etc., etc. But if you are finding cash flow as the thing that's stopping you from going forward, then maybe you're not even meant to be in business. Maybe you don't even want it bad enough because this right now is free. I'm talking to you right now for free, but I'm spreading my message and hopefully somebody's going to share this. All right. There's a lot of things that you can do for free while you're waiting for the cash flow to come in. So if you're going to stop yourself dead in the tracks and say cash flow is a problem, then I might as well say close that business before you hurt yourself and everybody else that's involved. Because if you can't think of things to do or how to navigate around not having cash, then what are you going to do on May 14 when you actually are broke? So I don't think that's something that you should put in front of you if you really, really want this business to come through, Kirsty. All right? So it's just one of those things. That's just how I feel. I came from Africa with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams. No money, nothing, zilch. So don't say cash flow. Cash flow, yes, it is a problem. But if you're going to put it ahead of where you want to go, then you might as well stop playing with yourself. That's a lot of negative self-talk right there. There's a lot of things you can do for free. What, what is stopping you? Or how is money stopping you from getting ahead? I want you to let me know right now. Maybe I'm going out of line. But where is the money stopping you from getting ahead? So in order for you to overcome all this negative self-talk, you really need to structure, you know, how you're going to come up with your, with your really big dream and, and, and make it believable. Believe you are going to be the person that is able to actually, um, you know, get that thing working. Self-doubt will not get you anywhere, Kirsty. And Kirsty says, what? Oh, okay, that was the question again. All right. So you can't make your, your goal, um, you know, overcome, be overcome by things that can be, um, you know, um, you know, corrected by literally going into work. If you don't have cash, put in, put in the work because you want cash so that things are easier. You want cash so that you can pay somebody to do stuff for you. If you don't have cash, put in the energy, put in the work, put in the labor. All right. Put in the time because if you don't have cash, put in the time. But if you have cash, then do you know what I mean? You can then outsource and, and, and get, get more done. Okay, so I mean more exposure. What are you selling and who needs to hear about it? 
All right, I know you you do something with hair and makeup. Have you gone to contact every event manager within um, your town there in Shepparton? Have you gone to contact every single person that can help you get towards, um, you know, people that are going to be weddings, receptions, all those things? Have you put in the work? I don't think you have. Because exposure is all about getting people to understand and know what it is that you sell and how you can help them. How many people have you actually reached out and say, hey, listen, this is what I do. I'm more than happy to do it for you at this price. Because if you're just going to rely on technology and you're not going to want to put in the work, it's not going to work that way. And I'm going to tell you something, Kirsty, that is probably going to shoot you in the ding dings. This is 2018. This is the beginning of the year. You have more competition than you had last year. You know why? Because this is the time when Sally, John, Richard is also saying, I want to start a business. So this is the time you should actually be separating yourself from all the wannabes that are starting this year. But guess what? If they have the grit, if they have the wherewithal, and if they don't care where the cash is going to come from because they're going to create it, and I'm sorry, it was grand opening, grand closing for you then. Believe that you are the person that needs that product to be existing within the world. But if you're just going to cry foul and say it was cash flow, you're going to flow with that too. Break down where you want to be into smaller chunks. Who do you need to become? Who do you need to contact? Who do you need to partner with? Then you get the exposure. And what do you mean by exposure? All right. So at the end of the day, what connections, what, what knowledge have you got? What are you bringing to the table? All of those things. Your problem is not cash flow. You just don't want it bad enough. So take some time. Think about the major components of your long-term goal. What knowledge do you need to have? Who do you need to be a part of? What, what, what sort of connections do you need to, 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 to have? What equipment do you need to have? Or maybe you want all of the above. The idea is that, you know, sometimes we think some materials are necessary and we need to put them in order for us to, to make our dreams come true. But that's not it. You probably need to make sure that you're functioning 100% up there. And when you're functioning 100%, guess what happens? All of those things will start coming in. And if you're doing it for the money, then maybe that's why you're chasing something that's not meant to be yours. Find out what's missing for you to get where you want to be. And start building towards that. Because every step that you take will build you towards going somewhere. People will support a city or a town that they helped to build. People want to watch you grow. Don't just think that you have to be established already so that people would think that you're the go-to person. That's the reason why individual businesses creating personal brands are going to be winning in 2018. But if you want to go in as if you're already established and if you want to go in as if you already own everything else, then you're shooting yourself in the, in the foot because you want to grow your own clients as you're growing with them. What are your long-term goals? Figure that part out. You know, and step up, you will be building rung by rung as you step up the ladder. Put in a lot of work. What knowledge do you need to put together? What, what connections do you need to have? And once you've built all the necessary steps, you would reach your goals. Right now, it shows me that you haven't done anything. Whatever you did or whatever you put together in 2017 is, is amounting to nothing just based on that question you've just asked me. All of these things are constructed individually, one by one. The way a carpenter would build them and piece it all together, you just don't have a, a cabinet. It comes in in a flat pack and you're reading the instructions. Okay, put left side, right side, and then you put it all together. Don't just expect to have, a, you know, a, a, a shelf from Ikea. No, one piece at a time. Because your goal, if your goal is to create some sort of conglomerate, you know, that fights whatever causes in several different countries, you, you're going to need to have the knowledge of how, you know, business is operated in different areas. You're going to need to have the knowledge in what your customers actually want. What are you serving and who needs it? Don't just expect cash from people that don't know who you are. Do you know what I mean?
So figure out what do you need to know in order to have the things that you want. You might need to start working on sub goals, isolate whatever it is so that you get the finest, you know, materials, finest connections so that you now get the cash flow you're looking for. It takes 21 years, Kirsty, to be 21 years old. All right, make this your focus. Hone into what you really need to put together before you start looking for the end results. What have you done that deserves that cash flow? You put it all together. You know, the greater part about all this is, is you're building yourself as you go. You know, I'm sorry if I let loose on you, but then it's just one of those things that at the end of the day, if you're already starting with excuses, because excuses sound best to those people that are saying them. To everybody else, you're just like, oh, that's the reason why we're in business, to figure stuff out. So if you're just going to be wanting answers, ooh, I don't know how that works. I'm sorry, I'm not the right person for you. You know? You need to create those experiences. You need to create that environment that attracts the money. What have you done to deserve it? You know, what knowledge have you acquired that will help you run that small business in your local community? Who knows about your existence? You need to educate yourself because people will allow you or give you the permission to sell to them when they trust you. They need to know, like, and trust you first. What have you done to earn that trust? No one is just going to part with their credit card just because you're pretty. Don't be in a rush to put out mediocre stuff out there or content or product just because you want cash flow. Grand opening, grand closing. All right? So you really, really need to learn who you have to become. You really, really need to figure out how you're going to achieve those big goals because big Hairy, audacious goals can be intimidating. But with the right system for breaking down those big goals, gathering the right materials, constructing piece by piece individually so that whatever foundation you're making right now would withstand. Because if you're just going to rush to wanting the cash flow, you are building a house on the beach, you know, during summertime. What happens when it starts raining? All right, so only you can make that big Go or dream believable. And once you believe it, all the other people around you will, will believe it and they will support you to go towards it. You need to increase your energy and the likelihood of you actually re reaching that goal. And if you're in Australia, guys, I am inviting you to pick a profile on the Australian Business Online Directory. That's going to be a directory that I'm going to be helping you market your services. Um, first of all, depending on what profile you're going to be, it will help you reach a wider audience, especially in Australia. So if you are interested in knowing more about the directory, type in the number two or just type in DIR so that I know what you're talking about. Type in DIR so that I send you a link um, you know, to the directory and so that you two can be, do and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I see my mom has just tuned in. Mom, happy new year. I hope you're having a fantastic day right there. Say hi to dad for me. And if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. Subscribe to the show. Subscribe, um, you know, to this channel. This is what we do every single day at 2 p.m. AEST. We show up and we're talking to you lessons from very tiny businesses. If you want, you know, um, you know, answers to how you're going to be doing, have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Type in DIR, especially if you're in Australia, so that I can send you links to the directory. In the meantime, thank you so much for making this fun for me. This is the first episode of yet another, um, you know, exciting year. 2018 is going to be a wealthy year for me, for you. Everybody else is going to be involved. In the meantime, I really want you to enjoy the first um, week of your business, which is what we're doing. But, um... Uh, I really want you to succeed. I really want you to win. All right. So here's a smiley face from me and a little chuckle right there. And let me know um, if you are doing much in 2018. Type in DIR so that I can send you the link to the directory. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, guys.